man touch it. You got fucking proof that you fucking Peter Gunji not. And you have to pay my fucking Francis Gunji the money that you pay for proving that fucking will. Because that fucking will wasn't promoted. That will was never promoted. And you don't even fucking know that. She's a dunce fault. She's a fucking dunce. She goes and tell a fucking child on a fucking plane and fighting for this stunt. One door. You're disgraceful. You're disgraceful. You fight for a fucking one door. Me and I fight for this. This is a the fucking world. I don't care. I have a big fucking house. You see me fucking house and drop this stunt. I don't have to fight for this for you all man. All of y'all dead. Nicholas Dorback Williams pleads guilty to manslaughter of Clarabelle Johnson. What you need to know. Welcome back to Guyanese Voices. Today, we dive into a harrowing case that has captured the community's attention. Nicholas Sean Williams, infamously known as Dorback, has pleaded guilty to killing his reputed wife, 28-year-old Clarabelle Johnson. We encourage you to share your thoughts on this developing story in the comments section below. If you have any new stories you'd like to share, message us on WhatsApp. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more updates on this and other breaking news stories. This tragic case sheds light on the dark realities of domestic abuse, and as we unravel the details, we are reminded of the importance of justice and the community's role in addressing such tragedies. In this video, we'll take you through the details of William's recent court appearance, the events leading up to this tragic incident, and the story behind Johnson's tragic death. Let's dive into the details. During his recent court appearance at the Demerara High Court, Williams faced a capital murder charge, but he accepted a plea to the lesser count of manslaughter. This change in the charge means that he will likely face a different sentencing outcome, which will be decided by Justice Joe and Balo on November 21st. Williams, 50, was represented by his attorney, Kiswana Jefford, while state attorneys Pranetta C. Raj, Mikkel Purin, and Rubina Christmas prosecuted this sensitive case, bringing justice closer to the grieving family and community. Let's now recount the tragic events of October 6, 2020. According to reports, Williams attacked Johnson near her home on Cooper Street, Albowerstown, delivering a severe chop wound to her right knee. The wound was devastating, severing a major artery and causing extensive blood loss. Despite being rushed by concerned citizens to the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, Johnson succumbed to her injuries shortly after arriving. Following the attack, Williams attempted to evade capture, fleeing the scene. However, he was apprehended shortly after on James Street, Albowerstown, bringing a sense of relief to those who feared he would escape justice. The couple's history was one of conflict. Johnson, a mother of three, had separated from William several years ago due to his reportedly abusive behavior. She had returned to live with her parents, while Williams remained in the area, operating a small bicycle shop. This separation, however, did not prevent him from continuing to be a presence in her life, and tragically, their relationship would end in such violence. With the sentencing scheduled for November 21st, the community waits to see if justice will truly be served for Clarabelle Johnson. What them here? What them? They come to serve justice. They claim to serve justice. Them this is claiming to serve justice. What justice you are serving? Watch, watch. Justice, please watch. Look, watch. You are claiming to serve justice. You are claiming to serve justice. Exactly. You want to show your gun? Yeah. Yeah. 
Sir, they are receiving what's your what's your yes. Don't know what's all of push it for this somebody. They are going to do a video. They are going to video a stupid crass. They are going to video a stupid crass. They are going to video a stupid crass. They are a crass. They are a fucking crass. Yeah. They are a fucking crass. Former manslaughter accused Brian Hermanstein found dead in Linden House. What you need to know. Just months after being acquitted of manslaughter, 25-year-old Brian Hermanstein was found dead in his Linden home. This sudden development has left the community in shock, raising questions about what might have led to this unexpected tragedy. Today, we'll dive into the details of this case and examine what's next in the investigation. After Brian's acquittal in May 2024, his life took an unexpected turn with this recent incident. His body was discovered around 5 p.m. on Tuesday in his home at Vismar Hill, Linden. Authorities are still piecing together the circumstances around his death, with an autopsy set to provide more answers soon. As of now, few details are available, and law enforcement has yet to release a full statement on the case. Brian and his brother, Eldon, were acquitted just a few months ago, after being charged with manslaughter in 2022. The case had drawn significant public interest, given the nature of the charges and the eventual not guilty verdict. Many were still processing the outcome of that trial when news broke of Brian's sudden death, adding another layer to this complex story. This tragedy is a reminder of the weight that follows those entangled with the justice system and highlights the challenges they face even after freedom. As the investigation into Brian's death unfolds, the community is left with questions and concerns about what might have happened in the days leading up to this discovery. The autopsy results will shed more light on the circumstances surrounding Brian Hermanstein's death. As we wait for further updates, we'll continue to follow this story and bring you the latest developments. With that said, thanks for watching, and until next time. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.